soapmaking.com and sudsandwax.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make vegan milk soap, hot soap style. Um, the reason why I'm doing this video is because the process is slightly different than regular hot soap making and there is a bonus book in my hotsoapmaking.com called 101 soap, Hot Soap Recipes and the vegan milk soap is one of them and I wanted to make sure that everyone understood the process being that it's slightly different. So I hope you enjoy this video and if you have any comments please send them to Renee at hotsoapmaking.com Thank you. First of all, letting you know you can find this recipe at um, hotsoapmaking.com. It's in one of the bonus books called 101 Hot Soap Recipes. So the first step is to put your coconut oil and your soy oil in your pot. Make sure you weigh them properly. I'm actually making two batches here. The white pot is going to be with frozen coconut milk and the room temperature is going to go into the blue pot. So we're going to first do the frozen coconut milk. So the next picture is going to be the two coconut milk in the jars waiting to have the sodium hydroxide added. We're going to do the frozen coconut milk first which is on the right and I first weigh my sodium hydroxide and add it to the jar. It's going to be stirred. It takes around 45 seconds to finally melt all of the partially frozen coconut milk. It gets quite hot so the coconut milk does change to kind of a light tan color. While this is going on, we melt the oils on the stove and at this point we add the sodium hydroxide and the coconut milk to this oil. Blend it really well for about five minutes. This is not going to come to trace. There's far too much liquid in here to bring it to trace. So after we mix it really well, we put it back in the double boiler with the lid on it. Cook it for about ten minutes and now it's time for us to check on it again. So put your pot back in the sink, take your lid off, take a look at the soap for a minute. It's starting to saponify but it might need a little bit of stirring. Yeah, there has been separation so we can see that when we stir it. This is not a problem at all. It's hot soap making and it's really easy to fix. So the next step is for us to get in there and mix it up a little bit, get everything broken up and then we go in there with our stick blender. This is a necessity. You need this tool for hot soap making. Give it a good blend. It's going to take a few minutes for it to be smooth again. What you want, what your goal is to is to have a nice smooth soap. So keep blending. Um, that's one of the great things about hot soap making. You can't really make any mistakes. It's always fixable. There's always a way to save your soap. Whereas with cold process, that's not always the case. I've always had a lot of success with hot soap making and after 14 years of making soap, this is definitely my favorite process. It is successful every time. It allows you to use a lot of essential oils that you could never use with cold process simply because it would cook out during the chemical reaction. Whereas with hot soap making, you go through the chemical reaction before you even add your essential oils and your delicate oils such as rose hip and jojoba. So we're almost there. This is looking very good as far as smoothness and just a little bit more blending and we should be fine. Only took a couple of minutes to bring it back to a smooth finish. So it looks good. We are now going to put it back on the pot for a few minutes and um, check in about 10 minutes and here it is. It looks completely saponified and I know this by the color and the texture and when you've done a few batch of hot process, you will know what it looks like when your soap is saponified. Now we're getting into the second batch. We're weighing our sodium hydroxide and we're going to be putting this sodium hydroxide into the room temperature coconut milk. Give it a good stir. What I noticed right away is it's getting really thick and kind of gooey. After a couple of minutes stirring, it's actually quite clumpy. It's 
and dry, it doesn't look like there's any moisture in there anymore. But there is. What we are doing here is adding that sodium hydroxide and coconut milk to our oil again, just like we did in our first batch. And blending it for quite a while. This this one took a little bit longer because it was so clumpy and messy, but this is how smooth it turned out. With this is the point where we put it back in the pot and let it cook for another few minutes, 10 minutes. Take a look at it. It has separated, which is not a problem with hot soap at all. After, after making cold process and having it fail so often, which it tends to do, a hot process is really simple to fix. If it was cold process, it would be a disaster. Here we go mixing it. It doesn't take long till so all of the oil, coconut milk and sodium hydroxide are once again mixed up and put it back in the pot for another 10 minutes and it's perfectly fine. Completely saponified at this point which means all of the soap molecules and all of the sodium hydroxide molecules have bound together and they have made soap. Um, that really is what our uh, goal is here. In the next step we are going to add all our special oils and color and put it into the mold. If you were doing cold process you would add your scent and your color and then put it in the mold before it saponifies. But we are doing hot process and this is completely saponified soap that we are dealing with at this point, which means all of your benefits from your oils will be intact. None of the scent will be burned out because, well, saponification is quite a harsh reaction. It's a chemical reaction and it generally does not allow a lot of the essential oils to survive the process, which means you have to use fragrance oils. Most of the fragrance oil is actually just a bunch of chemicals that have been mixed up. I never use fragrance oils. I always use only essential oils, any kind of natural color, any kind of natural herbs that go into my soap. I don't use any type of chemicals to enhance the look or the scent. It's all natural. I think that adding chemicals at this point would be a shame because you're taking a completely natural product and you're adding chemicals, you might as well just use a commercial brand if that's the case. It really does make a difference. Now looking at the two, I'm just comparing them for you. The one on the right is the partially frozen coconut milk and the one on the left of course is the room temperature. So right now I'm adding a few things to the soap batch. I first added jojoba oil and I added a orange tangerine essential oil to make it smell pretty. I'm also going to add turmeric which is mixed with a little bit of the jojoba oil to make it liquidy and I'll do a little bit of a swirl in this soap but if this was a cold process you would not be able to use any of the citrus oils because they do burn out therefore you, I would have to use fragrance oils which I just refuse so here we are mixing our first batch um, swirling is fairly easy and you can see that it stays quite liquid for a while I like to put it into the mold carefully so you can place where you want to have the swirl and it, it always seems to turn out quite nicely for me. Finishing off this one batch, so it just I think it turned out quite nice and I'll show you later how nicely it bubbled. I used it two nights after this when I had a chance and um, it's quite nice. They're both actually very nice. I just liked how the partially frozen coconut milk reacted with the sodium hydroxide more than I liked how the room temperature one did, which was quite clumpy as you can recall. So that is our finished soap, the one batch, and the next batch I'm using um, rosehip oil, and I'm scenting it with what I call a tree hugger blend, and you can find that in my book which comes as a bonus with hotsoapmaking.com. Natural fragrances, mix it in very well. Again, both of these soaps have 
kept their scent quite nicely. I'm really happy with how they turned out. Now, for this one, I'm using a sandalwood powder that I also mixed in with the rose hip oil. Just a little bit. I like to make it sort of the kiss consistency of honey. It seems to work well for this. It makes it easier to swirl and it doesn't disappear into the soap as much as a thinner would be. Here is the swirling, taking out as much of the soap as possible. You can always make soap balls with this after, which I have done as well. Um, I like to take soap with me every time I go traveling, so I always have at least a soap ball in my um, suitcase at all times, so I never forget it. Here we are just tidying up the top part. The reason that I am dropping it a couple times is to make sure that all the soap goes into the middle and the sides. Um, now these two molds that you see here, they were made using my bonus book as well, which is the recycled soap molds. You can customize it to whatever size you like. This is the next morning. This is hmm, probably about eight hours later. I am just slicing the sides. I'm not slicing through the the actual mold. I'm just, as you see, it come kind of is put together like a flower, and you'll see that when I pull down the sides. This is the best way and easiest way to take out your mold. They're just taped to the sides, so these are completely usable again. You'll find this book in the bonus area of hotsoapmaking.com. This is a very handy mold, and this is the one I use for all of my soap making consistent and it's environmentally friendly and you never have to worry about having something in your mold. You can make as many batches at a time as you want because you can always make another one. They take about 10 minutes to make it. It's really quite quick. You're ready to mark your cutting line. I generally cut them in one inch pieces. So we're marking one side every inch and then we'll do the other side. This makes for a little over a four ounce so once you have marked both sides, you're going to want a nice clean cut across the top. I'm using a soap cutter here, but you don't have to invest in one of these. You can use a nice sharp kitchen knife. Here I'm just showing you that each of these bars weighs around 4 ounces. This one happens to weigh 4.3. Now it's time to try out our brand new soap. The first one is the soap that was made with the partially frozen coconut milk. Very soothing, very soft, nice big bubbles. I like it. It's a good one. It's a keeper, definitely. The next one is the one that was used, made with the room temperature coconut milk. This one is just as soft, just as soothing. They both smell great. They both lather really nicely. I don't know if I have a favorite at this point. As far as the soap itself, I love both of them. Thank you for watching the video on vegan milk soap making. If you would be interested in learning more about hot soap making, please visit hotsoapmaking.com and visit my blog at sudsandwax.com. If you'd like to leave some feedback on this video, please email me at renee at hotsoapmaking.com. Thanks a lot and have a great day.